Hi, my name's Mike Jex. I'm the author of the Templar series, and my latest book, King's Gold, is just out now. King's Gold is a bit of a thriller which is set at the end of King Edward II's reign. It's just at a time when the kingdom's falling apart because Edward II was pretty much loathed by everybody in the kingdom. And towards the end of his reign, his wife had left him and taken as her lover. Uh, King Edward's worst enemy, and they invaded the country with a bunch of Hainault um, freelancers, mercenaries, and took the kingdom away from him. So this is just after that's happened, and the king is being captured and is being held in Kenilworth. And the main strength of the plot, really, is that it's just at a time when two brothers, the Dunheaved brothers, had collected a gang together to try to spring King Edward from the castle and release him so that he could take his throne back. There are the two main characters. One is Sir Baldwin Fernshill. Um, Baldwin's an interesting character because I created him on the basis of an ex-Knight Templar who managed to escape all of the torture and the death and destruction at the end of the Templar's rule. Um, and I thought, what would have happened to a Knight Templar who managed to escape from the torture and everything and managed to make his way back to England? And so I invented this character who was very worldly wise and he'd seen the, the papacy, he'd been to Avignon, he'd been to the Holy Land, he'd been in various battles, he'd uh, been stuck at the Siege of Acre in 1291, and he saw the end of the Templars. And I thought, that he's ideal, I'll have him as a main investigator. The only trouble was, I suddenly thought, when he gets to England, he's going to have no idea about the customs or anything, because he's been away from the country for 30 years. So I invented a second character, who's based on a real bloke called Stephen Puttock, and my character's called Simon Puttock, the bailiff who is owned by um, the Abbot of Tavistock, who knows all of the local customs because he's a bailiff. And he knows the area and the people. Um, when I started writing, um, I, I tried to prove to myself that I could actually write a book. And so when I started off, I was getting up at 6.30 in the morning, because that's when my wife got up to commute to work. And I was working from 6.30 through to 12. I took a half hour for lunch, worked through till 6 o'clock, took a half hour for supper, and then I worked through till 11 o'clock at night every day, like seven days a week. And that way I wrote three books in three and a half months, and the third book was the first of this series, The Last Templar. Um, nowadays I take it a little bit more easily. I tend to walk the kids to school, and after that I'll take the dogs for a walk, go for a quick cycle ride. As soon as I've done that it's about 11 o'clock, and I spend 11 till 12 reading through what I wrote the day before, and adding small bits, to just doing some basic editing, have a bit of lunch, and then from 1 till 5 o'clock usually, I'll work flat out and again I'll work from about 7.30 through to 11 or midnight, uh, mainly because that means I avoid the kids interrupting. <laughs> what makes me passionate about medieval history is the fact that, apart from the fact that every boy I think when they're a youngster dreams of knights in armour with big pointy swords and things, I really like it because this was one of the most turbulent and unpleasant periods in England's history. We had the Great European Famine from 1315 to 1322 that killed a third of our population. We had a disastrous king in Edward II who was so fickle and pathetic he couldn't control the kingdom and barons at all. Um, we had wars on a minor scale leading up to a massive scale because as soon as Edward III came to the throne he started the Hundred Years' War against the French. And then finally we also had the Black Death. All of this in the first 50 years of the, of the century. It's a perfect time for writing murder books. No. No crime writer I know of has ever had writer's block. It's something that only literary lovies can afford to have. It is not something that real writers ever suffer from. Because real writers, instead of having writer's block, which means they're sitting back cogitating about how to spend their ill-earned money at the wine bar, actually real writers just write. And it may be twaddle and it can be complete rubbish, but you still write through it. No one ever gets writer's block if they're serious writers.